Hello again. In this video, we're going to talk about theorems of orthonormal columns of a matrix. It turns out that matrices whose columns form an orthonormal set are important in applications, and the main properties are given in the theorems of this video. The first theorem we're going to talk about is theorem 6, which says if you have an n by n matrix U, the columns of this matrix are orthonormal if and only if the transpose of U times U is the identity matrix. The proof in the textbook uses only three columns for simplification of notation. So it says here, suppose that U has only three columns, each a vector in RM. The proof of the general case is essentially the same. So we're going to let U be the three columns, U1, U2, U3 where each of the UIs is going to be an RM. We don't know what size they are. And the transpose of U times U, here's the transpose of U times U, is a 3 by 3 matrix. This is a 3 by 1. This is a 1 by 3. So you can see it's going to be a 3 by 3. The first entry is going to be the first row and the first column. Again, these are vectors, so you need to make sure that you um, multiply those out. With, it's like a matrix within a matrix. And then this one would be U1 transpose times U2, the first row, second column. And then we'd have the first row, third column. And then we can do this for the next row. The second row would be the U2 transpose times each of these in their respective spots. And finally, on the last row, third row, first column would be the entry R3 transpose times R1. And then we do R3 transpose in the second column with R2 and R3 transpose with R3. Now these are just inner products. If you remember, the entries in the matrix at the right, this right here, are inner products using the transpose notation. And since the columns of U are orthogonal, if and only if, each of these are zero. So they're just going to say each of the ones that are zero that are not the same. And because they're orthonormal, the distance is one, the length is one, this just represents the length. If you don't see that, let me remind you what R1 transpose R2 is. If you remember, let's just do U and V. U transpose V is going to equal to, well, U transpose is U1, U2. I don't know how many of them I have. We have M of them times V1, V2, Vm which is just equal to U1 V1 U2 plus U2 V2 plus, because now it's a 1 by M and an M by 1. It's going to be a 1 by 1 matrix. So it's just going to be the dot product of those two vectors. Where again, U is um, a, a vector. And that's what we transport. We have a 1 by m. So you can clearly see that u1 or u transpose with just u is going to be u dot with v, uh, u dotted with u, which by the way is the, by definition, magnitude of the u. So now you can see where these are going to be zero when they're not the same. Orthogonal means uh, ui, uj when i is not equal to j is zero, and ui, ui we know is one because it's orthonormal. Let's look at example of this. Show u1 uh, being one over the square root of three in each entry, and u2 being negative one over square root of two, zero, and one over square root of two show that they are orthonormal. So using this theorem, I'm just going to let u be u1, u2. 
the columns of this matrix. So I put them there. And all I got to do is show that U transpose times U is the identity. So U transpose is I'm going to take these rows and make them columns. Here's U transpose times U. Does that equal the identity? Well, let's check it out. This is a 2 by 3. This is a 3 by 2. So we're going to end up with a 2 by 2. And the first column is 1. I mean, this first entry here is using row 1 with column 1. So we get 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third, which is indeed 1. The second column, or the second, sorry, um, entry, uh, let's call it row 1, column 2, is going to be row 1, column 2. It's going to be a negative 1 over radical 6, a 0, and plus 1 over radical 6. So, so far, I have this is equal to a 1 and a 0. So far, so good. Now, let's look at row 2. Row 2 with column 1. Oh, first I see a little mistake here. This was supposed to be a radical. It was only radical 2s. So, this is going to be this entry here. Negative 1 over radical 6 again, plus 0, plus 1 over radical 6. And we indeed get a zero in this spot. So now finally, looking at the second row, second column, we get a one half plus zero plus another one half, which is indeed a one. So it turns out from our theorem that the columns are orthonormal to each other. They're orthogonal and their length is one. Let's go ahead and check this. Uh, this is actually really easy to check because there's only two vectors, but you can see this could be very useful when there's more than just two vectors. So we have, if we check u1 dotted with u2, we better get zero. Let's see if we do we would get 1 over radical 3 times negative 1 over radical 2 added to 1 over radical 3 times 0 plus 1 over radical 3 times 1 over radical 2. That does work. We also need to check that checks, it shows that they're orthogonal. If it's orthogonal set, it needs to be orthogonal set. So if there's more than two, then we need to ch check every single combination. Since there's only two, we could just check these two. And then I'm going to also check to see if they, the length is on each of them is one. And that would be u1 dotted with just u1, which would be indeed one. You can see you get the same numbers here. Three over three, which is one. And then the length of R2 is going to be U2 dotted with U2. Oh, I forgot the square root here, but that didn't change our situation. Still one. So this is going to be a one half added to one half, which is going to be the square root of one, which is still one. So theorem seven. Theorem seven states that if U is an n by n matrix with orthonormal columns and X and Y are in Rn, then you have the following three properties. The first one states that the length of U times X is just the length of X. Part B states that the um, U times X dotted with u times y is just x times y. And part c says that u times x dotted with u times y equals zero if and only if x dotted with y is zero. I'm going to start with the proof of b. ux dotted with uy. Because part a you have to use the square root. So I'm going to take the definition ux 
transpose u y that we did above and in the first section. Just with any normal vectors, we know that that's just another definition for dot product. And we can transpose this, and we know from transpose that this is going to be um, x transpose times u transpose. And we just, and these are all, these two are vectors. I should call those vectors. Oops. And u is a matrix. So I just stated it up here. Let u be an n by n matrix and x, y be an r, n. Now we have here that this is just the identity. We just, that's the theorem of six. That's i. There's a transpose there. So we have x transposed with y, which by the, again, by the definition, is just x dotted with y. We have it. Uh, proof of A is going to be the same thing, letting y equal x. Yes, you do have that extra ux dotted with ux, but we know that the dot inside is just the um, x dotted with x from part b, which by definition is just the length of x. Proof of c automatically comes from proof of b as well, because if you had um, uh, this is equaling to zero, since they are equal, that means that x dotted by y is also zero, and there's where that if and only if comes. So looking at an example six on our book, we're gonna let u be the matrix, an orthonormal matrix. It is orthonormal. They say notice that u is orthonormal because if you take u transpose time u, you do get the identity. And x to be radical to three, it says verify that we do have part A. So let's just try it. So let's look at u times x. What would that be? This is a three by two, and this is a two by one. So we end up with a three by one. And we have here the first column, sorry, first row, first column, which would be uh, one plus two, which is three. The next one, again, the radical twos canceled. So you end up with a one again, um, and then minus two. So, so far we have a three and a negative one. And then finally the last row times that only column would be just one. Zero, the threes cancel. And the magnitude of that would be the square root of three squared plus negative one squared plus one squared which would be nine plus one plus one square root of 11. Let's look at the magnitude of X and just see if that's the same. So that would be, because we know X is one, a square root of two and three. So that would just be the square root of radical two squared plus three squared which is indeed 2 plus 9 square root of 11. It is the same.